Most folks come to Japan for the neon lights of Tokyo, the temples of Kyoto, maybe even the deer in Nara. But me? I'm drawn to the fringes where tradition simmers beneath the surface and the unexpected weights down cobblestone alleys and mountain paths. That's what brought me to Aomori, the northernmost prefecture of Japan's main island. So ditch the guidebook and come with me as we dive headfirst into the heart and soul of Aomori. First things first, you got to understand something about Aomori. These people know how to throw a party. And I ain't talking about some lame karaoke bar with watered down beer. I'm talking about the Nebuta Matsuri, a festival so wild, so visually stunning, it'd make a Mardi Gras parade look like a school play. Now, unless you're here in August, you're going to miss the main event, but that's all right. Because the next best thing is right here in this museum. Imagine towering, illuminated figures, part mythical beast, part historical warrior, crafted with a level of detail that would make a Swiss watchmaker weep. These are the Nebuta floats, and seeing them up close even when they're still is like stepping into a dream. You can practically hear the chanting, smell the incense, feel the energy of the crowd. The museum does a hell of a job explaining the history of the festival and the craftsmanship behind the floats. It's a celebration of history, artistry, and pure, unadulterated joy. Forget your Granny Smiths and your Honey Crisps, folks. We're in apple country now, and Aomori's got more varieties than you can shake a stick at. And the best way to experience it? Get your hands dirty at one of Hirosaki's many apple orchards. There's something about plucking a ripe, juicy apple straight from the branch, the sun warm on your face, the smell of the orchard in the air that just makes you feel alive. We're talking about apples so crisp they snap when you bite into them, so juicy they dribble down your chin. From the classic sweetness of the Fuji to the tart tang of the Kinsei, there's an apple here for every palate. As you wander through the rows of trees, you'll learn about the different varieties and the generations of farmers who've dedicated their lives to perfecting these fruits. It's a side of Japan you won't find in the guidebooks, a glimpse into the rural heart of this country. Castles, samurai, cherry blossoms. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Cliché, right? But trust me on this one. Hirosaki Castle ain't your average tourist trap. First off the setting, this ain't some concrete jungle, we're talking about a sprawling park surrounded by a moat with views of the Hakoda Mountains in the distance. And in the spring, forget about it, the place explodes in a riot of pink and white as thousands of cherry trees burst into bloom. Built in the early 1600s, it's one of the few remaining original castles in Japan and you can feel the history seeping out of every stone. Walk across the creaking wooden bridges, imagine the samurai patrolling the ramparts. Picture the battles that raged beneath these walls. And don't even get me started on the Hirosaki Cherry Blossom Festival. It's a beautiful, chaotic, unforgettable scene. Remember those giant illuminated floats we saw back at the museum? Well, tonight they're coming to life. The Aomori Nebuta Matsuri is about to kick off. And trust me, this is not a spectator sport. Imagine a sea of humanity, thousands strong, all crammed into the streets of Aomori City. The air is thick with anticipation, the smell of incense and grilled squid, the rhythmic beat of taiko drums pounding in your chest. And then they appear. The Nebuta floats, each one more impressive than the last, emerge from the darkness, their paper lanterns glowing like giant fireflies. They're accompanied by hordes of dancers, clad in colourful Haneto costumes, swirling and leaping to the pulsating music. For these few nights in August, Omori transforms into a whirlwind of colour, sound and motion. It's a sensory overload in the best possible way. All right, after all that excitement, it's time to unwind. And there's no better place to do that than Asamushi Onsen, one of the oldest hot springs resorts in Japan. Now, I know what you're thinking, naked people in hot tubs, and yeah, that's part of it, but there's a certain etiquette to onsen culture, a respect for tradition, and a focus on relaxation that goes beyond just getting clean. Imagine this, you're submerged in steaming hot water, naturally heated by volcanic activity, surrounded by nothing but the sound of the wind rustling through the trees. The stress melts away, your muscles relax, and you feel a sense of peace wash over you. Trust me, it's weirder than it sounds. 
Most folks come to Japan to, for the modern marvels, the bullet trains, the neon lights, the robots. But beneath the sleek facade lies a history as deep and rich as any on Earth. And here in Aomori, at the Sanai Maruyama archaeological site, we get a glimpse into a past that stretches back millennia. We're talking about the Jomon period, a time so far removed from our own, it's almost unimaginable. Yet here it is, preserved in the earth, a testament to the ingenuity and resilience of the people who once called this place home. Imagine walking among the remains of pit houses, their foundations still visible after thousands of years. The museum on site does a fantastic job of bringing the Jomon period to life with exhibits showcasing everything from tools and weapons to pottery and jewellery. It's a humbling experience, a reminder that we are but one small chapter in a much larger story. Let's face it, sometimes you just got to get out of the city and into the wild. And in Aomori, that means heading for the hills, specifically the Hakoda Mountains. Now, I ain't talking about your Everest-level climbs here. These mountains are accessible to just about anyone, with trails ranging from leisurely strolls to challenging hikes. But don't let the accessibility fool you. The scenery here is nothing short of breathtaking. Imagine dense forests of beech and maple trees, their leaves exploding in a riot of color in the fall. Whether you're an experienced hiker or just looking for a peaceful escape from the city, the Hakoda Mountains have something to offer everyone. Just remember to keep your distance from the local wildlife. Look, I love sushi and sake as much as the next guy. But when I travel, I want to taste the soul of a place, the flavors that tell the story of its people and its history. And in Aomori, that means diving headfirst into the local cuisine. Forget your fancy Michelin-starred restaurants. We're talking about down-home cooking, the kind of food that's been passed down through generations, made with fresh local ingredients and a whole lot of love. First up, we got to talk about miso curry milk ramen. Imagine a rich, creamy broth spiced with curry and miso, topped with noodles, pork, vegetables, and a dollop of butter. Then there's the seafood. We're talking about fresh off the boat scallops, grilled to perfection their sweet, delicate flavor enhanced by a squeeze of lemon. And don't even get me started on the apples. From apple pies to apple cider, this region takes its apples seriously. So we've picked apples, we've eaten apples, we've probably even dreamed about apples at this point, but no trip to Aomori is complete without a visit to A Factory, a complex dedicated to all things apple. Imagine a converted brick warehouse, its interior transformed into a haven for apple lovers. You've got shops selling every apple product imaginable, from jams and jellies to ciders and candies. You can watch apple pies being made from scratch, the air thick with the smell of cinnamon and sugar. You can sample different varieties of apple juice, from sweet to tart to sparkling. And if you're feeling really adventurous, you can even try apple ice cream. It's a celebration of Aomori's agricultural heritage. After all the excitement and adventure, it's time to slow things down and soak in the natural beauty of Aomori. And there's no better place to do that than Lake Tawada, a crater lake nestled amidst the volcanic peaks of the Tawada Hachimanti National Park. Imagine this. You're gliding across the surface of the lake, the water a mirror reflecting the azure sky above. The only sounds are the gentle lapping of the waves against the boat and the distant calls of birds. Whether you opt for a leisurely sightseeing cruise or rent a kayak and explore the hidden coves at your own pace, Lake Tawada is a place to reconnect with nature. It's a reminder that sometimes the most memorable experiences are the simplest ones. Aomori, oh, you've been a trip, kid. You're not for everyone, I'll give you that. You're a little rough around the edges, a little off the beaten path, a little too comfortable with silence and tradition for some folks, but that's what I love about you. You're real, you're raw, you're unapologetically yourself, so until next time, Aomori, keep it weird, keep it wild, and keep those apples coming. <laughs>